Okay, so this is the online lecture portion for your lab six, heart rate and blood pressure. Um, I thought it was weird and uncomfortable lecturing up in front of y'all in a classroom, but talking to myself, quarantined in my apartment with my space heater and my dog, I feel like that's a little bit more awkward. So let's start. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Heart rate and blood pressure response to graded exercise. Well, we're first going to be talking about heart physiology, and then we're going to get into exercise affects the heart. All right, so starting off with anatomy, um, the heart, all it is is a pump. It just takes in blood and then pumps it out to the rest of the body or to the lungs. Um, so as you can see on these pictures, the right side of the heart is the deoxygenated blood, the, the blood that needs to go to the lungs. So it enters through the heart through the right atria, goes into the right ventricle, and then pumps out to the blood or to the, um, to the lungs. And then the oxygenated blood from the lungs pump in through the left atria, go into the left ventricle, and then bumps out to the rest of the body. For cardiac physiology, the heart is just a muscle. That's all it is. It's a, it's a glorified pump. So it's a little bit different from skeletal muscle in the sense where it has one nucleus. It's kind of like type one fiber type, but it's not exactly. Um, and the reason why it's not exactly type 1 is because the muscle fibers are, they don't start and end at a certain point. They're short and branched like this right here. So with a skeletal muscle, the fiber would start here and then end all the way down here. And then the next fiber next to it would start here and then end all the way down there. But with these, they start and end on top of each other. And they're connected by intercalated discs. And uh, this is super important for the, the electrical signal to pass through them. So it's kind of like a, um, like a wave. So, and they all kind of behave like a, uh, like a hive. So the electrical signal goes down through each cell and then each cell will contract as the electrical signal goes through. Uh, another reason why it's similar to type one is because the mitochondria. All right, so something that's super unique about the heart is that it has these cells called pacemaker cells. Um, Instead of receiving electrical signal from the nervous system, the heart will produce its own action potential. So these pacemaker cells are the cells that produce their own action potential and they kind of go on their own uh, rhythm. So the main pacemaker cell is the SA node, or pacemaker bunch of cells. Um, SA node is the main one. It determines your heart rate. All you need to know is the main one. And AV node, bundle of his, they're kind of like backups, but they will also produce the electrical signals. The heart rate is regulated by the autonomic nervous system. You already know this. It's divided into two, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Um, sympathetic occurs when there's increased exercise, um, so it increases heart rate, chronotropic, and then increases force of contraction, so contraction is getting harder, and that's inotropic. And then main chemical messenger is epinephrine. And then the second one is parasympathetic, um, that's when you're at a resting state, so decreased heart rate and decreased force of contraction. And the messenger is acetylcholine. So cardiac output can be determined by uh, stroke volume and heart rate. So 
this equation right here, stroke volume times heart rate is the cardiac output. And it's basically the amount of blood pumped out of the heart per minute. It's directly proportional to exercise intensity, so low intensity increased stroke volume will increase cardiac output. Um, for moderate intensity, what changes is the heart rate. So the stroke volume stays the same, but the uh, cardiac output increases because the heart rate increases. And then same thing with high intensity. Cardio drift, um, cardiac drift. Um, steady state is something that we talk about in like submax exercises or submax uh, tests. And while it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a lie you're not really getting to a certain heart rate and then staying there um, because your heart rate, as you can see in this graph, will just slowly increase over time. It won't stay at this uh, level off, this plateau forever. The heart rate will increase as you continue on with your exercise. Um, and that's because since your muscles are moving, your muscles are producing energy, they're, they're getting energy from your carbohydrates and fatty acids. And so with those reactions, you always produce heat. So your body is getting warmer, your core temperature is increasing. As you in increase your core temperature, your body tries to cool it down by sweating and sweating reduces the amount of fluids in your body, which decreases your plasma, which increases your heart rate because your heart is working harder to pump out the blood to the rest of your body. And the, the blood pressure is decreasing because there's not as much volume. So because the blood pressure is decreased to like increase the blood pressure again, or to maintain the blood pressure, your heart rate goes up. Heart rate, regular resting, Heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Anything lower than 60 is bradycardia. Anything higher than 100 beats per minute is tachycardia. Um, and obviously training can affect your resting heart rate. Um, how does this affect stroke volume and cardiac output? Your stroke volume increases like to maintain that cardiac output that you need at rest your stroke volume increases. And so you don't need your heart rate to be as high. So your heart rate will de decrease from, your heart is uh, increasing its strength. So increased strength, increased stroke volume, decreased heart rate, maintain cardiac output. And obviously heart rate is directly proportional to exercise intensity. If you're gonna exercise at a high intensity, your heart rate is gonna go skyrocketing like me going up a single flight of stairs. Uh, I don't do cardio. Cardio is hard, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and this, uh, this equation right here, predicting heart rate, it's not the best one, but it's the one that we use in this class um, because it's easy. It's just 220 minus the age. Um, and why is it like that? I have no idea. Um, Okay, so uh, measuring your heart function, heart rate, um, there's a number of ways to do that. So EKGs or ECGs, uh, which we will be doing, or which we'll be talking about next week. Um, it basically provides information on your rhythm, your rate, electrical activity. It can tell us a lot about the functionality and the health of your heart. Um, heart rate monitors, everyone's seen them. Um, they could be like the ones that you strap to your chest or like the Apple watches or whatever. Um, those aren't as accurate, but they are technically a heart rate monitor. Or you can palpate any of these arteries um, we generally palpate the radial artery. We do not palpate the carotid artery, 
artery during exercise because we don't want them to pass out. Um, but these are all points on the body where you can palpate artery. Um, uh, like we talked about before, factors that can affect your heart rate, temperature, humidity, emotional state, um, temperature especially, um, emotional state, anxiety about the coronavirus that can definitely affect your heart rate and realizing your phone is not in your pocket when you're out and about that definitely affects my heart rate okay uh now we'll talk about blood pressure it's just the force placed on the blood vessels by the blood so taking blood pressure there are two sounds that you will listen to. The first sound when you're taking your blood pressure will be the systolic, and then the last sound you listen to will be the diastolic. Um, systolic is the lub, diastolic is the dub, lub dub. Over here is just a nice little chart of blood pressure. It's very nice. The systolic number is the top number, diastolic is the bottom number. So during aerobic ex exercise, systolic blood pressure will increase and diastolic will stay about the same. But during resistance exercise, systolic will increase and diastolic will also increase. Um, and upper body exercises increase blood pressure more than lower body exercises because that is closer to the heart. And um, systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure will decrease after exercise. So your normal blood pressure will be lower after exercise as opposed to at a normal time. Yeah. Measuring the blood pressure, Dom has a video um, that is posted um, demonstrating how to take blood pressure. You use a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope, stethoscope and um, what you'll be listening to are things called court cough sounds. Um, it says it sounds like this, but all I can hear is the thud. Um, but basically, um, you'll pump up the cuff and then you'll slowly release the pressure and then you'll look at this dial and the dial will slowly go down as the pressure releases and then you'll hear you'll start to hear the lub the sounds and then your uh the hand of the the dial will start to like flicker so it'll like tick with each of the the sounds and then Eventually, you'll stop hearing the sound, and then the hand will start moving smoothly, so it won't tick anymore. And this is what we would have been doing if we were in class, but 